area. Uh, thanks to popular demand, well, at least three people anyway. Uh, let's have a quick chat about using an automated green up process and how you go about specifying that. A green up rule is actually perhaps one of the easiest rules you can create. Simply add the rule in, give it a name, green up all, and the action that you're going to use is green up all selections. So I should specify the start time, we'll start it at the beginning of the race, and that's essentially it. Uh, the two sections in here that you need to really be concerned about is the greening up price, either using the available price, so that means that the closing bet will be placed where the money is lying, as opposed to, in this case, in front of the money, sitting and waiting for it. Now, in running, there can be quite big gaps, so you may find that you're, there's a bigger chance of your green up process not working if you use that option. So use that option. You can still get um, a failed or only partially matched green up process when you use that option, uh, particularly in running and particularly if uh, the green up doesn't happen till towards the end of the race and you have multiple runners in the field that you have selected or bets on. That's one of the reasons why I, I don't bet more than or include more than three runners in a Dutch when I'm intending to trade out. Because the more runners you have involved, the more likely it is that some of the closing trades won't be matched. And then the obvious thing that you would want to do is to cancel any unmatched bets or pending bets, rather than have them still sitting in the market after you've greened up. And that's essentially it. Now this is uh, th this will work, this will fire, but it will fire immediately that the race goes in play, as I've got it configured here because there's no conditions met or set for it. But if you use the conditions option, you can now use the market green up all P&L and specify when you want this green up process to fire. So you only want it to fire when you're going to make £25 profit across the field once the green up process has kicked in and been fully matched. Again, make sure you use uh, available price for that calculation. And that's it. Now you can do essentially the same thing to do a stop loss. Uh, and then in here, all you need to do is to change that and have a less than minus 25 or whatever stop loss value you want to fire at. So if your market, if the race isn't going your way, you can cut your losses by having it triggered. Generally speaking, as I've mentioned in many videos, I don't like doing that in running. Because the amount of times that it reads up across the board only for my selections to go on and win or hit a position that would have given me a green. Too numerous to count, to be perfectly honest. So I wouldn't do that in running. But uh, that's an option uh, available for you. So, yes, perhaps the simplest green up or the simplest rule you can create is a green up all option. You can make it a little bit more sophisticated, in fact. Uh, imagine that uh, the bets I've placed, let's say I'm doing a Dutch, and if I was to let that Dutch run through to its conclusion, it would give me a certain profit if one of my runners was to win the race. So you could create a number of these rules with the condition such that the green up was triggered or a different green up was triggered based on what your potential profit is if you let things run through to its conclusion. To give you an example, let's change this here and let's imagine for a moment that I wanted to green up for five pounds so we'll set that back to greater than five. And I only wanted to do that if the potential profit, if I left the Dutch to run through to its conclusion, was between 20 and 30 pounds. So what I can do here is add in this option here, the market profit and loss. And I want my maximum to be greater than or equal to 
20. And then I want to add in another one of those. And my maximum is greater, uh, less than, sorry, 30. So what will happen in this particular case is the, the green up process will say, right, the potential profit, if I left this thing alone, is between 20 and 30 pounds. So I'm going to green up for five if I hit five. That's what that's saying. So we just click on OK for that. And then we can do a similar one simply by copying and pasting that in, right clicking and choosing Edit Rule again. And this time we're going to green up for 10. And so we're going to green up if our profit and loss is greater than or equal to 30 or less than 40. And so on. Just do and put in as many as you like. Now these are just examples. I haven't uh, tested these to see how efficient they are. Uh, but this is how you would do it. Uh, you can have your own breakpoints if you wish to try this. So again, we just go, we'll go up in five, five pound increments. Uh, so that'll be uh, 15. And that should be um, 40 now. And that'll be 50. And then finally, let's do one more. And we'll green up for 20 pounds. And in this particular case, when we've done that, uh, all we need to do is set that to uh, 50. And we don't actually need this one now. So anything, anything equal to and above 50, we're going to just green up for 20 pounds. So that, uh, with a little bit of extra work, gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of uh, the way the green up process works. So you're, you're relating it to the, the potential profit, the maximum profit you would get if you were to let your event run through to its conclusion without trading out. Okay, and you can put in as many of these breakpoints as you like. And again, you could also do exactly the same type of thing as uh, multiple different stop losses at different points. Uh, but again, that's not something I would do for an in-running market. Okay, I hope that makes it a bit clearer as to how you do a green up. Uh, a green up all option. Keep in mind that it's applying itself to the across the field. So if you've got multiple runners, there may be an occasion if the market is particularly volatile that the green up process won't be fully implemented across the field. So you may actually have to have it triggered twice, but I'll let you figure out how to do that. Okay, hope that helps. Cheers.